So, this is me after 25 packages, $200 spent, and two months of waiting, finally able to lay my eyes on something no one's looked at in nearly a decade. Dude, I'm telling you, there's no way they're a lot. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Let me explain. Hey, I know this is a weird question. Why are they getting more expensive? Hey, do you have any Nintendo? Do you have any copies of Nintendo? Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I'm looking to save Nintendo. You wouldn't happen to have any copies of Nintendo. Nintendo, 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 Nintendo. So, this all started a few months ago on a morning like any other. I started my day like most low tier YouTubers worshiping Mr. Beast, but as I bent down to pray to our second coming of Jesus Christ, I found something that would change my life forever, or at least the next few months. Where have you been? Now, for those who don't know, Nintendo is a pet simulator game made for the DS that's basically Pokemon without the whole, hey, go beat each other to death thing. Well, most of it. In the game, you could raise a dog, feeding, washing, and playing with them, and even entering them in contests to completely destroy the competition. And I, like many other kids born before 9-11, grew up with one of these games and my very own virtual pet, Fabio. <laughs> For various reasons, I wasn't able to grow up with one of those real dogs, so instead, I grew up with man's virtual best friend. Everywhere I went, Fabio went. To school, to the park, to the bathroom. Me and Fabio, we were inseparable. But as I grew up and was able to get a real dog finally, I got distracted and at some point, Fabio was lost forever. Or so I thought. It's here that after nearly 10 years of waiting for me to return, Fabio and I were reunited. Oh my god. Is that my boy? It was incredible. Despite an entire high school and college education wearing me down in the years between us, Fabio miraculously hadn't aged a day and he was still excited to see me, which honestly was really touching considering this is what I usually get when I come home. You know what you fucking did. Don't act innocent. Me and Fabio spent that whole morning together reuniting, getting to know each other again and catching up of all the years between us. But the longer we played, the more it started to set in that despite Fabio being here in all of his pixelated glory, unscathed the nun age being an incredible gift that also might have been a discovery of the worst thing we as a species have ever done. Well, maybe not ever. I mean, what had he gone through in those 10 years? I guess, in a way, nothing. The date in the game was still 2009, and yet here he was kicking ass in 2023, but was time not passing for him? It's here that I realized for the past 13 years, Fabio wasn't escaping father time and simply not aging. No, he showed signs of boredom, neglect, hunger loneliness, and as I realized the pure torture I had put on my childhood best friend, the worst effect of aging for any game took place. Cartridge failure. Fabio? You see, Fabio wasn't just sitting there, waiting to be turned on again after all those years, but was really trapped in a constant state of neither life nor death. He was in a limbo of ones and zeros, alone, afraid, and waiting for that little kid he knew would come back one day, but I... I guess I was too late. It was in this turmoil of holding my childhood best friend in my hand broken that I realized something that would set me down a road I never thought I'd be on because Fabio wasn't the only one. You see, unlike most games made today, DS games are actually pretty special in that their save data isn't stored on the device you play the games on, but instead, the very cartridge itself. With any game, you can get a completely new DS and continue right where you left off, but what does that have to do with Nintendogs? Everything. When you think about the 24 million copies of the game sold, how many Fabios have we forgot? How many childhood pets have spent countless years alone and afraid just like Fabio did, and more importantly, how could I, the main character, let this continue? So. I did what any sane person would do with my realization. I wasted two months and $200 and bought 25 untested copies off of eBay and well, I think I need mental help. The plan was pretty simple. Rescue some used copies in Nintendogs, make sure they work, and give them the loving home they deserve. All I really had to do is drive around the few remaining GameStops in my area, come home, and make some new friends. It all sounded so easy, and in a way, it should have been. But in only my first GameStop trip of the day, it became pretty clear this journey wasn't about to be the walk in the park that I thought it would be. 24 million copies, and you're telling me you guys don't have a single fuck. You see, as it turns out, unlike Pokemon which seemingly infects every GameStop like domestically abused cockroaches, finding a copy of Nintendogs was seemingly as rare as they were forgotten. Seriously, in the five total GameStops in my area that I drove to that day, there was a total of zero Nintendogs anywhere. Unbelievable, I know. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Brad, you're a smart, handsome, and thoughtful guy, and thanks for doing this, but why didn't you go check out GameStop's website and see if the copies of the games were even there before driving all that way and calling up the last location like a psychopath? 
thank you for calling GameStop where you can buy and sell used games. This is Chantel. How can I help you? Yeah, hi. I'm just calling to see if you guys have any copies of Nintendogs. You're like the sixth GameStop in the area, and I don't feel like driving anymore today. Um. No? Ah, okay. Thanks. really wish it was that simple, but when I tell you that GameStop's website not only lied to me at every possible turn about if a copy of the game was even in stock, they had these bad boys listed for the insanely cheap price of 15 whole dollars for one copy. They had Pokemon Platinum, a game that originally sold for $40, was somehow in 2023 being sold for the great price of 85 bucks. GameStop, what are you guys smoking over there? Fucking gamer subs? Release some greenhouse gases. There's no way these are even quality assured, let alone maintained, and you're charging $85? It's no wonder that there wasn't a single person in any of the stores I went to, because if I wanted to get screwed that hard, well, I'd just go to your mother. It took one look at eBay's prices to see that it would clearly be a better investment to shop there instead of GameStop, but waiting two whole months just for some games to be delivered? It sounds like an absurd waste of time, but what choice did I have when, to me at least, these weren't just games at all, but rescues and friends that have been forgotten for years and only I knew about and that I promised to save. I had to act now. <sighs> They waited for 10 years, they could wait two more months. Waiting for two months sucked. Between the slow trickling of packages coming in, the literal superstorm I had to live through, and just how generally used to instant gratification my monkey brain's become, it was as painful as it was fun to watch my Ziploc bag full of Nintendo copies slowly fill up. But then I started to worry. What if these weren't used copies, but completely new ones with no dogs saved, or worse, they were cleared? There was a chance this entire two month period of waiting was completely useless, but eventually the last package came in and it was finally time to meet all of my new friends. Why am I storing these like drugs? The day was finally here. I chosen to stockpile each copy in order to open them all at once for that little extra bit of drama, and with the first copy slotted into my borrowed 3DS, only thing left to do now was wait for the loading screen and hope there was a dog or two waiting for me. It all came down to this. No fucking way. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> the plan was a success! On the first cartridge, we had two lovely dogs named Amy and Cutie who have not been looked at since 2013. These dogs are literally older than the last of us. Things were off to a great start and only continue to get better with each cartridge. This one here had three dogs, Rusty, Tammy, and Kimmy, and as soon as I launched the game, they would rush over and say oh, hi to me. Look at this wholesome hi, shit. No, hi guys. They were easily the friendliest of the bunch and Kimmy especially really liked me. I think her and Fabio would have been friends. The third batch of rescues was a little weird. This one had Nunu and Demon, a dog who definitely lived up to his name. But in all honesty, wouldn't you be mad if you haven't seen anything since 2009? You guys are old. The day definitely wasn't without its scares. I opened up this Chihuahua edition and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out watching this. Oh, are they dead? I think they're dead. They stayed motionless like that for five minutes. Are they supposed to? It was concerning, but thankfully out of the three, Chloe, Cookie, and Chi Chi, Chloe woke up and the rest kind of followed suit. Well, I think Chi Chi uh, might be dead, but at this point, I bet you're probably wondering why I've only talked about four games. And some of you may have noticed a pile in the back. I may have been wrong in my hatred for GameStop. Um, you see, as it turns out, uh, eBay doesn't have the best quality assurance, and I know, I know, that's on me, but I didn't expect them to mess up this badly. Some of the cartridges just didn't work, others were really, really damaged, and oddly enough, I got a game that wasn't even Nintendogs. It was Pets Nursery 2, which was a Nintendogs clone. It had two baby kittens, but uh, we're in the dog business. I don't got time for these. In the end, we ended up with four working cartridges and out of the 25 ordered, that leaves 21 fallen soldiers. When I started this plan, I accepted to build a home and somehow ended up with a morgue. What have I done? It wasn't looking at the slowly growing pile of dead Nintendogs that I started thinking of Fabio again and as I held the remaining dogs in my hands, I thought it wasn't fair. Why should these guys who have been left abandoned for years just eventually time out and break even if they weren't played? It was just unfair. They didn't deserve this. Fabio didn't deserve this. And I know that their childhood owners would absolutely hate to see them have that fate. One I knew too well. 
which is why I bought this. You see, with just this little device and an emulator, we can help these dogs escape father time. All I had to do was plug them into my computer, copy, paste, and there was that asshole demon right on my computer, safe in the cloud where they will never ever be forgotten because now whenever I start up my computer, I see one of them, a mortal. But what did I do with the doggy graveyard sitting right next to me? Well, I did what we do with all pets we love. I ended their misery. When you think about it, it wasn't their fault they were forgotten. Really, it was ours. Virtual pets, just like regular pets, want one thing. A user's love and attention, even more so than regular dogs, because it's just hard programmed into them. All these little ones and zeros really know is love, and yet, look what we've done to them. They've been left forgotten, found under furniture, on eBay, in GameStops for exorbitant prices, yet no one's stopping to give them the love they deserve. In my mind, it's easily one of the worst things we have ever done, but it's nice to think that I did something Fabio would be proud of. Thanks for watching.